Alex Answer here. It is the sixth day of October in the year 2016. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a recent article that I wrote, Mass Mind Control Through Network TV, because I was contacted by some journalists out of Russia that had some very specific questions to that 2005 article. And that was like the first year that I got involved in alternative media. Jeff Rents posted it. I actually read it last night. And I really ought to do more writing than just simply speaking because it's just amazing how a written article can get out there across the sea, if you will, and get people thinking about perhaps, you know, how they're seeing some of the stuff as well in the world and how it's contributing to the, uh, the war, the zombie apocalypse, and so much more. So our connection was not very good, being that I'm in rural Colorado and you know, internet's pretty crappy here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to answer the questions on video and then upload this video to YouTube and they can get the information from there. So we'll start at the top and we're going to cover most of their questions. First question, the propaganda, brainwashing and manipulation of mass consciousness, how do they differ from each other? A lot of these words have similar meanings. However, not all of them are limited or, or solely coming from the television. You can have human beings repeat to other human beings certain pieces of propaganda. One of the memes that I'm hearing today, oh, the establishment hates Trump and all the evil in the world is coming from Hillary Clinton. And that's not how I view the political situation. You know, I think there's evidence that shows that these two political candidates are friends. So this is, this is an example. It's a microcosm example of a larger issue. And there's other forms of um, propaganda that exist that are repeated from mouth to mouth because human beings are social creatures so they don't want to stand out too far. It's like the old Japanese saying, don't stand out too far, you'll be the, the first one to get hit. You know, so a lot of people are infected by this propaganda that they have to fit in to their social peer pressure group structures. Okay, so it's not just about the television. This is manipulation of mass consciousness. This is brainwashing. So mind control is not limited to the television set. If you want a really deep historical perspective on MK Ultra, uh, I would check out the video from the uh, Guerrilla News Network uh, entitled, I believe it's the most dangerous game or something to that effect. But, uh, you know, in short, MK Ultra came about in the 1950s out of uh, Bluebird where they brought Nazi officers into the United States after the fall of Nazi Germany also to South America many books written about this where they begin to investigate how they can influence the mind and create different personalities split personalities and this science of mind control has been evolving covertly worldwide since that time in the 1950s it did come out in the church hearings of the late 1970s where victims of this program came forth and they talked about it in the U.S. Congress. So this is not speculation that we had a program like this where in some cases it was believed that they drugged mental patients as well as soldiers. That's right. The first experiments were done on U.S. soldiers in the Army in the 1940s, and they actually recorded video of this. It's actually quite sick. So that's actually where it started, and as far as I'm concerned, it's been evolving since that time through covert means. And the core of that is the television set. The next question, do you use this experience in the promotion and zombieing modern viewers? Okay, so um, we are dealing with the zombie apocalypse, and it is ongoing. Uh, today, we can look at the television and the internet as root causes of some of the things that are taking place, absolutely. Along with the propaganda and brainwashing, which is not limited to the TV set, where people keep each other in line. Oh no, don't don't ask questions about this. Oh no, don't investigate this. Stay a zombie. It's sexy to be a zombie. That's what everybody wants. It's just someone that just wants to have a good old time and not think too hard about the things that matter. 
In 2005, you said that one of the most common examples of mind control in our so-called free and civilized society is the advent and usage of the television set. Do you still agree with that statement? Do you want to make adjustments to this statement? Okay, so that was 2005. It's 2016. Facebook came onto the scene around 2007-ish, maybe, 2008. And YouTube came out in 2006. So Facebook and YouTube have both been primary arms of the mass media mind control game. And it actually came out several years ago that Facebook, which people watch more than TV in some cases, they think that they've escaped mind control by leaving the TV. They haven't looked as critically at what Facebook is really doing to their emotions. And they may stay on Facebook looking to Facebook for news and information after they were already exposed to the headline that Facebook is manipulating people's emotions. By manipulating their news feed, what they see on their news feed. And here is one of the things that I believe is taking place. Let's say, for example, you want to know about corruption. Let's say, for example, you're concerned about the borders. Let's say, for example, you're concerned about the wars. They have diverted genuine research into the real problems. And they have found a way to scapegoat the Middle Eastern immigrant or the Middle Eastern human. It might even be an immigrant. You know, it could be a Middle Eastern who was born in the United States who doesn't look white enough. Well, on Facebook, we have these fake reports that are flooding our feed saying that we are being invaded by rapists, invaded by terrorists, and all of these horrific things. They're invading the schools and they're making the little white girls become Muslims and, and put on the hajib. While there may be some isolated incidents of this in the world, it's not in reality at the level to which the Facebook newsfeed and many of the cable networks here in the West are making it seem like. They have grossly uh, exaggerated the problem, and it's created a mental health crisis in the United States. Gone are the days where people would investigate 9-11. Gone are the days where people would be critical of the police state control grid. Gone are the days where people would be critical of Big Brother. Now, they feel they need it, and they want it. And I think that Alex Jones and Dorsey Donald Trump is a very good example of this co-opting in the United States today, in the year 2016. Uh, Herbert Krugman's studies on the effect of television on our brains was performed in the 1970s. What was the essence of the experiments? And, you know, I'm not an engineer or an expert, so I would really consult Wikipedia or some other uh, sources of information on this particular individual. What I will say is that we have come out of the analog age, and we are currently in the digital age. You know, so back then, they were more easily... They were using flicker effects, flicker rates, inserting subliminals, 30 frames per second on an old analog piece of film. Now it's digital, and it's much harder to detect certain things. Uh, but I believe that what they were looking at at that time was using the analog frequency, the analog television set, to create a certain frequency in the... Um, in the viewers themselves. And there's there's many different experiments. Flicker effect, again, is, is one of the terms that has been used to describe the analog subliminal effect. Is influence of TV similar on the psychology of the American mind, Chinese, Russian, Ukrainian, and Arab? Or maybe it's national identity? Well, that's a deeper question. You know, when you can convince someone that their identity is their nationality or their race, all you have to do is create an enemy. An enemy created, of course, by those that want to create the fear, those in government, those in power, that this enemy is coming over the walls like a barbarian to destroy everything in sight. These people that are not like these people. Now, this may be worldwide, but it is very heavily used in the United States right now. From what I've observed, though, with regards to propaganda on other networks in other countries, I will just say this. The global conspiracy is global. It's not just the United States. Okay, and that's all I'm going to say right now.
I have seen how other networks are playing into the same methods of mind control. As far as I'm concerned, old China and Russia have to do right now at this point is just blame their problems on the West in the same way that the West has blamed their problems on the rest of the world because the tide is shifting and I don't see any good guys in this situation that we're discussing. So this type of just blame this other group for all your problems and call yourself a saint, no, that's not limited to the United States. I think we all know this is happening uh, across the board. But is it worse in the United States? than some other places, and I would say so. The question is, why is that? I would say there's some sort of a social engineering. They're, they're demonizing what it means to be an American. They're demonizing the United States as a whole in, in a few different forms. So I would say that is why this is happening. It's leading somewhere. Um, those in control of our government here seem to be uh, manipulating things to where the United States is going to face serious consequences, at least the American people. Not the people in control, not the people in power, people like me and the person across the street. Regular Americans seem to be set up to take the fall, you know, for something greater. How is television, radio, and the internet used to brainwash and control the mass consciousness? The latest discoveries of neuroscience and neurophysiology. Again, another question that is uh, more suitable for an expert. Let me give you my opinion. Energy is, is energy. We are all connected in some way. Uh, some people call it a, a hive mind. And some people call it a collective consciousness. And you can view this as a negative or a positive. Uh, but we are connected in some way. It's like, you know, you can look at someone walking down the street and they could turn around, you know, look back at you going, what are you looking at? And, and to me, that is a example of uh, an awareness, non-local awareness. The other aspect of that is it can be hijacked. And the fear, the fear that they program people with seems to open up a door to more programming. You've heard the expression I wrote about in the article, problem, reaction, solution, here are your problems. Plagues, terrorism, male sexual predators, what is the solution? A greater national police state. Demonize the men, demonize this group, demonize that group, and build up an empire of security. And that's the phase of reality that we're in more now today in 2016 than we were at the time that I wrote the article in 2005. So all this fear that they have put into the social media and YouTube, not just Facebook, you'll notice some of the fake conspiracy stuff. Sometimes it's about Russia. Sometimes it's about other countries, but it's fear, 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 fear. Threat, 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 threat. Unfortunately, this, this programming is working on a lot of people. So on a neural level, it's, it's like the neurons are being rewired to be reactive and reacting to this fear and giving power over to the controllers. Yes, this threatens humanity. This threatens freedom. This threatens the Constitution. Again, we have a Fourth Amendment. Is there anything that the Founding Fathers were able to see hundreds of years ago about invasive mind control that would be violating our basic human rights? No. So they weren't able to put something in the actual constitution to prevent that because it didn't exist then but it exists now and it's threatening our constitution and it's threatening our way of life it is possible to resist but a very small percentage of the u.s population is even aware of its existence many of them are aware of it to a certain degree so they've turned off the tv their mistake has been in assuming that facebook and youtube are giving them truthful bits of information they have gone from one mind control tool to another. And so television in many ways functions like a drug. <clears throat> I remember my, uh, <clears throat> my grandfather on my mother's side, fourth generation American uh, and uh, World War II veteran, carpenter, businessman, pilot, guy's guy, you know, real, real John Wayne type. Well, he would fall asleep to the TV and as a little kid, I was aware of this, seven, eight, and I was aware there was something going on. And there was some sort of addiction. And I remember uh, when we took a trip together somewhere, 
I've never seen this before in any other human being. We took a trip together somewhere, and I turned the TV off. We're sharing the same room, and I want to sleep. He woke up when I turned off that TV. So a lot of people are addicted to using the TV to help them sleep. I cannot think of something more irresp irresponsible for an American or someone else to partake in. Oh yeah, I'm going to fall asleep and I'm going to let the TV just program me with whatever the TV wants to program me with. I mean, that is asinine. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of our grandparents, and a lot of our parents, this is in the United States, for those of us that are younger, we've seen that this has been their way of life for a significantly long time. Again, the younger generation thinks they've escaped this. Oh, yes. They, they think they've escaped this. And, and they're walking around like this. And they're doing this. And they're doing that. As far as I'm concerned, staring into one of these all day, this is, this is I don't have a phone. This is, this is an iPod for music. As far as I'm concerned, by staring into artificial light, you are harming your intuition. I believe that we have a part of our knowing that is beyond the five senses. And this technology addiction to where people want the cell phone connection more than they want sex and love from another human being. These things affect our consciousness on a deeper level than which science is admitting. Again, I talked to you about the non-local awareness. You look at someone, they look at that. That is non-local awareness and it's real. These technologies interfere with that connection to the greater whole. Question. So if so, it turns out that we're all addicts. Absolutely. It's a drug addicted global society, not limited to the United States. So where are you seeing the world this obsession with cell phones? Where are you seeing in the world this obsession with flat screen TVs where you go in the bars and people are drinking their beer and you're seeing these monkeys on TV? Or, you know, wrestling, maybe the women beating the women up, or the men beating the women up, or, or, or something, or the women beating the men up. And then football, you know, um, soccer, games, girls taking their clothes off on TV, you know, you're in a strip club now, yay, have another beer, have a cigar, you're going to go far. You know, to quote the words of Pink Floyd. So, yes, we're in a uh, moment-to-moment addicted society to where the TV and, and the electronics are focusing someone's attention into something so so controlled. So television propaganda works on playing on people's fears, people's lusts, people's anger, people's confusion. It plays on the ignorance that the public governmental educational school system has already set up for them. The programming that people receive from their parents and from society, it plays on that propaganda that they already experience, that brainwashing that is organic, that exists outside of the TV. The TV amplifies what already is. For example, you have uh, human beings that have natural inclinations towards aggression and sexuality, sex and violence. And it isn't that these things are inherently wrong. It's that they're a part of our instincts. And our instincts can be redirected. Mind control through the TV and through the cell phone, through the radio and through the internet can rewire, as far as I'm concerned, a man or a woman's sexuality. So where the, the stimuli that they're receiving, you know, can actually, if they're a slave to peer pressure, to social demands, then if the TV starts to alter what is sexy, what is important, what is desirable, the person that is naturally under mind control, which I would say is most of the population with only a minority, less than 5 to 1% outside of the mind control, they are going to be infected by the television propaganda. And that also includes who to be afraid of. Oh, we were told those people are terrorists. Oh, we're being told that those people are born a certain way. They have a genetic disposition to blow up bombs. Well, then there would be millions of bombs going off in the United States. Not one, two, three, or just a few isolated incidents in the last year. And where were all the terror attacks since 9-11? Oh, it's all happening now. And it's all supporting the Donald Trump presidency. The ultimate mind control in the West now is that Donald Trump will bring the world peace. No, 
Donald Trump will bring the world to World War III and will cause a cascade reaction to where the world will turn against the United States and life here at home, for those of us that want peace, will end up in a more complicated situation then than now. The powers that be won't take the hit from the things that they're creating. They'll be an underground base. Or they'll be up in space with Elon Musk or some other ridiculous nonsense. The effect on the mind. We have a dumbing down of the mind, which I talked about, the intuition. And so the television propaganda creates more of this fight or flight. Fight or flight, fight or flight. So when someone is strictly in fight or flight, and they're not in greater awareness with their higher self, they are easier to control. Hollywood's role in brainwashing and the zombification of society is a huge subject. There's a book that I referenced in the article, Hollywood and the Pentagon. And so, you know, if you want to make a movie in the United States and Hollywood, you know, the military will help you out if you paint the military in a favorable light. So we have movies like G.I. Joe. We have movies like uh, Transformers. We have music videos from Kate Perry to where, again, break up with a family of relationships. She breaks up with her boyfriend in the music video. And then what she does is she, uh, she joins the U.S. military so she can go also and kill innocent brown people because of her failed relationship. She got to wonder what kind of social engineering led to the failed relationship. Hypothetically, if you will. For both her and the male. So mind control, disrupt the relationship, break up the family, and then promote genocide. Do as thou wilt. And that, in my opinion, is what they're doing through Hollywood. And then the sexy female zombie. They've been doing this for five years. The sexy female American dead girl. You look on YouTube, zombify yourself. Very popular ad several years ago. And then I, I see monkey see monkey do. The women on Facebook are now zombifying themselves. <clears throat> so if you tell enough women, hey, you're going to be more sexually desirable, if you put up zombie makeup, I mean, it's shocking, but it actually is working here in the United States right here and now. Also, by making the zombie apocalypse a joke, people are not looking seriously at the real zombie apocalypse. People not talking to each other. People obsessing on their cell phones. People being okay with millions dead in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and this aggression with Russia. NATO on Russia's doorstep. All these things that can go wrong and lead to nuclear war. Putin's warring the world. Other people are warring the world. They are not listening. They are out to lunch, as far as I'm concerned. And they are in danger. Because their government is putting them in danger. Violence, decomposing of moral principles on the big or small screen in computer games as a change of psychology and human behavior and what it may lead. And I'm just reading this as the questions came out line by line from Russia. So computer games is our next conversation. And I was writing about video games back then. In the article, I talked about going into a, uh, I was in Wilsonville, Oregon. And I walked in to Fry's Home Electronics, and I was horrified to see over 50 games depicting genocide and murder and killing in Iraq. Oh, Fallujah, uh, join the battlefield. What's changed since then? Now it's World War III in futuristic cities. Exoskeletons, Terminator, robots. It's global world war. It's what I believe is coming. You know, it's either Russian troops in the U.S. or U.S. in China or U.S. in Russia. It's just, it's, it's all over the place. And it is so sickening that I don't even spend time watching these video games for analysis. Because I could see what was going on way back when. And not just the obsession with guns and shooting, nothing wrong with guns. It's just this unhealthy... Notice how they got us programmed for the zombie apocalypse. They come out the other side and program us to kill the zombies. To be afraid of people. Get ready to slice someone through the head. And that's what these video games have done. Oh, it's just a video game. You're just shooting zombies and aliens. Yeah, those aren't, those aren't real living creatures. Oh, those are terrorists. It's just a video game, dude. Just relax. And now women, some of the girlfriends of some of these men, are becoming abnormally obsessed with bloodlust.
and destruction. And so this is really hurting the world of women. This is really a suppression of the feminine. One last point. All those millions dead in the Middle East and elsewhere, women brought those human beings to life. So when you have institutions and governments promoting genocide, they are really promoting the war on the woman. They are really promoting promoting war on life itself, on a human being that took nine months in her stomach to bring a child of the Creator to this reality. And they are desecrating that. And that is satanic. <clears throat> so if you want to look at one of the ways they're trying to infect the collective consciousness and turn into a hive mind, um, things like this are really good examples. There are fictional depictions of what is going on that are not meant to be real. They are metaphors. Certain Hollywood movies, They Live, The Matrix, Dark City, uh, even V the miniseries. Then there is the Adjustment Bureau. Total Recall is also an interesting movie, but there are themes that tie a lot of these fictional movies together. And mind control is at the core. The opposite of mind control is Gnosis. I am becoming a modern Gnostic. The Gnostics talked about the Archons. The Archons are not human beings, but many of these movies depict in some ways what appears to be a superior intellect, not a soul per se, but intelligence that is anti-human, anti-family, anti-love, anti-nature, pro-machine, pro-control, and we can see in some of these religions certain hallmarks. Ooh, the angry God that wants to destroy, murder, and rape, and send one group against another. According to the Gnostics, that is not the true God. That which is worshipped in Islam. That which is worshipped in Judaism. That which is worshipped in other major religions. It is not the true creator. And so if you want to go deeper into mind control, you may start with my article, but that is not where it ends. That is only where it begins. It is a Gnostic vision. It is a deeper understanding. And it is of the spirit. And this is a war of light and dark. And I'm not explaining that to you through a religious box. I'm, through my own experiences, have come to this awareness. <clears throat> Can our minds play a part in the hive mind? We can impact this matrix, if you will, with positive things. There is something called the hundredth monkey syndrome. So in the same way that you found my article and requested this information, you're actually challenging me to get more specific with my updated thoughts, which I'm doing for you now and I'm doing for my own audience. And what it's doing, it's helping us all learn. We are learning from each other. We are learning from the world. And so we can help the hive mind understand a greater understanding. You know why people like Alex Jones are out there? To create fear of them and to create false hopes. People like Donald Trump and, you know, to uh, basically misdirect his audience that for so many years has, has trusted him. He is a good example of a man that is in a negative way infecting the hive mind of collective consciousness. With what reach and power that I have, through my voice and my spirit, I am trying to impact the hive mind to see the greater whole and see beyond the illusions of separation. Who cares if you identify with your color or your race and you might see someone else as someone different than you? That's illusion. That's maya, as the Buddhists call it. That's archonic, as the Gnostics call it. That's demonic, as the Christians would call it. And that is of shaitan, as the Muslims would call it. All these different names to describe the entity of illusion and misdirection that sets man and woman against man and woman. Alex Jones and people like him in the United States are misleading people that want to know the truth, while I, with a much smaller reach, am trying to help people see beyond the illusions of separation which keep us bound 
to this matrix in some way. Okay, so what is the limit of influence of propaganda? Can it get people to commit unspeakable deeds? We are now reading stories about mosques being blown up. These are acts of terror. They are happening in Germany, they are happening in the United States, and you have Middle Eastern immigrants that are in camps, refugee camps, you might as well call them concentration camps. In Australia today, these people are hated. And worse things, I believe, are on the table. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of people in the West here they are starting to say that Hitler was right. There's a lot of people here in the West that are starting to say that, oh, they lied about Hitler. Hitler was a good guy. This is also propaganda. There is a subtle propaganda here in the West that Hitler was right. And that we need to drone strike them all regarding Afghanis, regarding the Iraqis. But a lot of people are not seeing this. They're not seeing the similarities between Nazi Germany and the current path that the West is on. And those that do, they're being called Hillary Clinton supporters. You know, years ago, Alex Jones, for example, would talk about the Nazis and things like that. Now, with the new Alex Jones that's co-opted for the establishment via Donald Trump, who is close friends with Hillary Clinton, have to make sure this point is clear, that Donald gave her $100,000 for the Clinton Foundation. So, you know, for those of us free of mind control, we can see that the elections are rigged, and they already have their selection in place. As far as I'm concerned, the next selection is going to push for a war with Russia and China. And this is going to be a problem for many of us. And so the unspeakable deeds are not limited to that. You have an unhealthy obsession with serial killers to where in our media, I don't know what it's like in Russia, they actually show the viewer the recreated act of the murder. I mean, this is insanity. They are showing people on TV how to commit acts of murder through reenactments on these serial killer shows which are very popular with American women. What kind of a mind can be conditioned to become obsessed with movies and horror films to where people are being chopped up into little bloody pieces? I don't have all the answers, but what I can say is it's more of an issue now than it was in the past. It's not that the TV is to blame solely for people mirroring what they're seeing. <clears throat> it really just simply highlights how suggestible most human beings actually are as far as our base human animal nature. So the TV and the internet and other forms, radio, other, are tools to hack into a mind, if you will, that as far as I understand and others from a Gnostic spiritual point of view, man and woman has had their mind hacked into for hundreds of thousands of years. Only now they have more technology to do it to more people. So by the way, if there was a solar flare that affected the grid, many of us would go back to a natural thinking way of, way of living. Especially if you remove the drugs, remove the pot, remove the nicotine, remove the substances, remove the television, remove the violent video games, mankind would return to a natural state of mind. And I'm not saying that marijuana will kill you. Many people in my society are using legalized medicinal marijuana to escape from thinking too much about the things that matter. And that is why they actually legalized it. And many people disagree with me on that because they enjoy it. I enjoy it myself sometimes. But I understand on a more intellectual level, it is legalized to pacify the masses. MTV has played a huge role in the mind control, in making the, the, the zombie female sexy, promiscuous sex, drug use, family values, on and on. What modern forms of propaganda and brainwashing in American traditional social media are there? 
but modern forms, the forms. What have we not covered? One of the things that I did write about, though, is how fast the graphics are on mainstream TV. And so you're literally jumping from thing, scene, to scene, to scene, to scene. And there's all kinds of subliminals back to Alex Jones in his Police State 4 documentary in the trailer. There was a subliminal that said, Submit to Fear. And it went... And it was very fast. And it was an obvious use of mind control. But... It is still mind control, even if it was a second instead of one thirtieth of a second. Fear to submit. Submit to fear. Okay? And so Alex Jones, for example, has been the poster child of what is called fear pornography. You know? Where people are getting off being afraid all the time. And people are afraid, as far as I'm concerned, and other people are starting to wake up to this that are studying this, the more afraid you are, the more suggestible you are to influence. Problem, reaction, solution. Of course, music videos in our country have also promoted gangster behavior, drug dealing, acts of crime. And then, of course, I already mentioned um, Katy Perry. And of course, Katy Perry is is joining the armed forces in response to the fact that uh, she had a breakup with her boyfriend, and that is a classic example of mind control. You know, implanting the 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 thought of joining the the army of death, if you will, in response to a breakup. What's also interesting is the recent announcement that the Pentagon is going to be putting. U.S. women, American women at the front lines in Afghanistan and Iraq. That announcement about putting women at the front lines as grunts in our military follows, that's right, follows these years of violent programming, these years of propaganda, the destruction of the family, and the Katy Perry music video of her joining the military after leaving her boyfriend. And so, all of this is fitting together. What are the American media on radio and TV in particular ways of mass mind control? And I think that I already covered a lot of that. I'm actually jumping back in the questions. Let me go forward. Used against countries like Russia and the Middle East. Right. Um, I see a lot of propaganda regarding Russia. And as someone that posts at the website amtvmedia.com, uh, I work for that particular uh, website under the news section. So you'll see some of the news that I post there. I try to keep people up to date on the geopolitical moves that are uh, taking us in this direction of global world war with China and Russia. It's a war that should not happen, but it's a war that uh, these elites, I believe, are planning. And so you see Russia demonized. You see China demonized. You don't see the deeper levels of information, which I'm not going to get into in this particular video. Those deeper levels of information happen to relate to how some of these world leaders are actually friends behind the scenes, right? So while they talk about war on the ground, you look up in space and you see cooperation between Russia and the United States, the International Space Station. So as far as I'm convinced, there are no good guys. You can edit and censor whatever you want, those of you that I'm sending this video to. But I don't know whether you've looked into it or not. But if you were to look into it, you might find that Vladimir Putin also contributed money to the Clinton Foundation. Okay, When you start to research on your own, you're going to find out that many of these individuals that are pretending to be enemies are in fact friends behind the scenes and have financial ties. As far as I'm concerned, this is actually a very dangerous thing to say in today's day and age, and the United States military is not the only potential... Uh, danger. The world is changing and somehow, some way, the United States is destroying itself by design. And in the end, are the elites going to be hurt? Or are innocent Americans going to be hurt when this war begins as a result of what our misleaders are doing in our name? These are very, very dangerous times to be an American. 
the Middle East. Now, propaganda gets the Middle East, it's a larger topic, but in short, Middle Eastern humans are being blamed for radical Islam. They are blurring the lines between Muslim and someone with Semitic blood. And I don't mean Jew necessarily. Semites, many people say, are actually Arabs and Persians and those in the Middle East, certain bloodlines. So it seems that there's a plan for a genocide that's coming. Already, when you look at it, there's millions dead in Iraq and Afghanistan, and the Pentagon only started to count the bodies in 2009. Meaning, there are millions of other uncounted bodies, because that has not been the Pentagon's policy. And so, the people of the Middle East, either in the Middle East, or those that are migrating here, and those that have been born here, or came here a long time ago, a lot of Middle Eastern immigrants don't understand this, and they're in denial. There's also many Middle Eastern immigrants that came here a long time ago that love the United States so much that they will work for the U.S. military as translators because they, they have been socially engineered into a mind state of worshiping the U.S. dollar. They are so happy that they're no longer in the killing fields. They're no longer in an area that's being droned. And so another term for this, since we're talking about mind control, is Stockholm Syndrome, where someone is under such intensive trauma and mind control that they have empathy for the institutions or governments that are suppressing them. <clears throat> Next question, is there a difference between TV mind control, television mind control? Is there a difference between television control, the mass consciousness, of the influence of the network, what's better? And I'm not sure I understand the question, so I'll just keep going. How effective is the American propaganda on the internet? More effective than the TV. In short, because you have people that were anti-establishment a couple years ago that are now pro-establishment. And I know a lot of people don't like me to talk about this in my country, but it is this Donald Trump obsession it is seen Hillary Clinton is the only corruption within her own government. I mean, that is impossible. I mean, I know those of you watching from Russia that have seen the corruption in our country for years, you might find that ridiculous as well. So that's what they've done. That's what they've done. They have got all these American conspiracy theorists, literally, I don't want to get graphic, but they're, they're pleasuring the, the Trump machine. They're humping the Trump, okay? They're humping the Trump. And they're following the cues of people like Alex Jones and others. <clears throat> so I have never seen, as I told one of the producers with a Russian media outlet, this much racism towards so many different racial groups from the blacks to the Jews to the Hispanics to all Semites. All Middle Eastern humans have been demonized as jihadists in this country now. And so this is currently, and I'm 36, this is the biggest white supremacy movement that I have ever witnessed in this current life. Who knows, perhaps I've lived in other lives and seen other forms of, of racial supremacist movements. But if we look at Nazi Germany, let's, let's go back and remember Nazi Germany falling and other gov governments intervening Okay, and certain things happened to the German people and the German women the day Berlin fell. Maybe go do some research. What happened to the German women in Berlin when the Soviets went in? Let's look at our own history. So it's not good for countries to go in a certain direction of just gas chambering people and murdering people because eventually... That country puts himself in harm's way. No, the German people were not put in the gas chambers in the same way that they did the Jews. But they were brought deeper into global government. I would certainly say that the financial powers that be used Nazi Germany to bring Germany into the fold. The same thing is happening in the United States. My only concern is I believe that the things that the United States has done to the people of the Middle East far supersedes the official story of Nazi Germany. 
And once someone actually reflects on this and reflects on universal law, reflects on uh, the dangers and, and harms that, that come from a government that is, that is completely out of control, that is murdering millions of people, there are consequences that are going to come from this. So, you know, that expression, God have mercy on your soul, God have mercy on our soul, if you will, God have mercy on our country, I, I don't know how much mercy there's actually going to be. In fact, as far as I can see, there's a lot of people that want to see the United States fall and worse things happen to the American people. So I keep coming back to this, danger is coming in the next 10 years as a result of what these misleaders are currently involved in. Okay, how effective is the American propaganda on the internet? I covered that. And how it differs from the TV or radio propaganda is that the TV and radio propaganda is widespread. It's about affecting as many people with a certain script. With YouTube and Facebook and social media, they have more information about you specifically so they can manipulate the news feed based on what they know about you or what demographic you're believed to be in. And then they send information and propaganda directly custom tailored just for you and your demographic. So I keep saying 10 years ago, conspiracy theorists, oh, we can't trust Bush and the mainstream media. Let's, let's just jump into the internet. And now it's become a more powerful tool with help from people like Alex Jones and others than we have ever seen before in known human history. How to protect yourself. Last question, and then this video will come to a pause. <clears throat> Meditation, connecting with nature, turning off the TV, having healthy relationships, being a, a moral person. We're really talking about psychic protection from known and unknown forces of influence. Being that the reality is we're not alone in the universe. Our global society, and, and think now if you will beyond the United States, we resemble more of a petri dish than anything else. Another aspect of the internet mind control, they've got people thinking more about flat earth, is our earth flat, than actually how do we overcome this mind control. You know, so there's, there's many ways in which once people start awakening to a grand deception, the PSYOPs comes in with a slew of videos and disinformation to take people from a place of awakening to a place of disinfotainment and disinformation and misdirection. And that's what we're seeing right now on the internet. <clears throat> Disconnecting from it and using the internet more as a tool. I choose to use the internet as a way to imprint the hive mind with a higher consciousness understanding, which I believe comes from my soul. A lot of other people don't believe in that, or they think lowly of people that express their soul on YouTube and their own gnosis. My advice for anyone on a path similar to me is to keep doing what you're doing because we're here to do these very things. Not sit here and eat M&Ms and Big Macs and watch the game. We're here to evolve as souls and work our way outside this matrix. Others, they're going to be there telling us, no, 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 you're a heretic. You don't like the lefts. You don't like the right. You're an anarchist. You're trouble. You protect yourself from the mind control by protecting yourself from the brainwashing thrown from your peer pressure groups. If you're a man, you don't think sex, 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 sex all the time. How can you act to get that woman to appease you? You become a more conscious, powerful man. You know, to where, you know, you, you have standards for a woman. For a woman, there are very specific things that she may want to look at to protect her mind from this influence. She should remember that men have value, great value, outside of how much money they have, how many dollars they have, rubles, won, pesos, whatever the case may be. But because they've got our mind on this artificial currency system, they've got us misdirected from where the real value is in ourselves 
and each other. <clears throat> so <clears throat> honest contemplation, meditation, I speak about this in other videos, psychic protection, meditation, ground yourself to the earth. We have all this technology, electromagnetic energy. Our bodies are electromagnetic. So we are responding to all this technology. You protect yourself by grounding yourself to something that is real, to something that is natural, and turning out the noise to the best of your ability. That's all for now. I think I've summarized my thoughts in response to these questions that were sent to me from the Russian media, not RT, but another outlet. And this video is going to be sent to them for their own use and their own purpose. And I hope those of you on YouTube enjoyed this video as well. I'm Alex Ansari, signing off for October 5th, 2016.